Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. It has been a while since I filmed. Um, it is now September and yeah, I have had a very difficult last few months. It has been insane between flare-ups and just other personal things that have been happening. I got super behind on all of my reading wrap-ups. I was actually just going to leave it and just do the wrap up for August but I decided no I'd rather actually do them all anyway because I enjoy doing them and I did read some good books and I do have some thoughts but I said that I would try and talk about them as quickly as possible so basically show you the book I'm reading, tell you what it's about and um, what I liked and what I didn't like. Merle is here with me, he's behind me so you might see him coming and going. Also the light is kind of going because it is late in the day so hopefully um, everything will be okay. I don't want my makeup too but um, at the moment it is September but in Ireland it's so hot. It has been so hot all over the summer. It was one of the reasons why I didn't film. I was literally melting and now the heat has come back and I like it's September. It needs it needs to leave now. It needs it needs. I also have loads of Halloween hauls and stuff coming. Um, I won't be filming them today, but I will be filming them this week at some point. So for every, um, I think, book video, I will hopefully have a Halloween haul. That's kind of what I'm planning. If it doesn't work out that way, I apologise, but I that's what I'm going to try and do anyway. So we're going to talk about May's books. And again, like I said, I will just quickly tell you um, the book, what it's about, and what I liked and disliked, and we will hopefully not have an hour long freaking video for just me. I didn't actually read anything in April and I remember when April happened and everything like that but I can't remember why I didn't really read anything in April. All I know is the book that um, I read kind of I started in April and went into May was Bunny by um, is it Mona Awada? Awad? No Mona Awad. I think it is um, their name. I'm not too sure. I don't really know a lot about the author. I think they may have another book that came out or something. But anyway, we're going to talk about Bunny. So a lot of these books, I don't actually have them physically to hold. And I really hate that because I love when people show me the book, the size and everything like that. But um, I get quite a lot of library books and then I just find the images online. But I think what I might do for future um, videos is actually take pictures of the library books when I have them and then um, put them here. So that you, you can just see the edition I had, what I was holding. Um, because it is a pet peeve of mine when people are talking about books and they don't actually have it. I know sometimes you read ebooks and stuff like that and it can't be helped. For Bunny this was actually an ebook and I was a bit cautious of it because um, I'm not too fond of reading on my iPad, that's where I read it and um, it just it hurts my eyes a little bit, you know, it's not the perfect screen to be reading from but um, I got on pretty well with it and Bunny isn't a, a book that's too long either. Um, so Bunny is basically about this college student who um, gets very obsessed with this other, um, with, the, with this clique, this other group of girls that um, all call themselves Bunny. Now this has kind of been stated as a seriously weird like what the hell is going on kind of book and that is what intrigued me the most um, that it was a bit disturbing and stuff like that. What I will say is when I heard that for some reason I thought maybe it was going to be weird in the sense of you don't know what's going on so you can't you just don't know what happened if that makes sense but for me personally reading it I felt it was very clear what was happening. <laughs> so I didn't, I, while I got a sense of weirdness, it wasn't very, very weird for me. And I, I don't want to be one of those people saying, oh, like that was some weird, you know, I don't want to be one of those people. But genuinely, it's not as weird as people say it is. I think some people maybe need to watch just a few more horror movies and things because it was kind of very clear where it was going. But that doesn't mean it was a bad book, obviously, of course. I really love the writing style on this. I definitely would read something else by this author again in future. And I really loved um, the characters in this, especially our main character's friend for some reason. I just really liked her. And um, I loved the descriptions of what she was wearing and stuff like that. That sounds very, I don't know, superficial or something, but... Um, I just really liked how it was all described and overall I did really enjoy it. I just was a little bit disappointed in the weirdness element 
and stuff like that that for me it wasn't a five star but it still was a four star for me is what I'm at, what I rated it and I still do think if you read the synopsis and it sounds like something that you would like go for it it also has a very kind of people were saying it was like Heather's but I don't know it's not really like fully like Heather's it's a bit more it's definitely way a bit more modern and like a lot of what's happening actually doesn't um happen in the college if that makes sense like it's not very college based um because like they are in other people's houses or in their houses and stuff like that if that makes sense so the vibe definitely is different than um it actually being just just filmed or set in a school or academic setting but I did. Like, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I would actually read it again too, and I didn't mind reading the ebook. I do think it would be a book maybe I would buy in future and read it um, physically and see if there was any difference. But I, I don't think it stopped my enjoyment of it anyway. As far as I know, so that was the first one. So the next book I read, <laughs> I really just went straight in with like. A difficult one. If I was having a difficult time in April, I don't know what I was thinking because then I jumped into House of Leaves by um, Mark C. Danielowski. Danielowski, I think that's how you say him. So um, we're just gonna call him Mark from now on. So House of Leaves. I mean, yeah. I was just complaining about like people not having books to hold up. Now I have this one and it's giant and I have to hold it. So House of Leaves is basically about, um, what is it about? It's about a, a man, it's about a recording, a film recording of a man who has a house and the house is bigger in the inside than the outside. So the man has this house and he like films about the house and then somebody finds the recording of the house and decides to write about it and then a person finds those writings um called he's called Johnny and then he gives his like insights as you go along so it's basically like three kind of parallel it's three yeah three like stories and conversations going along at the same time is it complicated absolutely um, the pages are insane like you know stuff like this happens um, you have to turn the, the book upside down and around and everything sometimes to read it but um, I did a reading vlog on this if you want to hear um, about how I got into it and how I read it um, it is spoiler free um, I absolutely loved this book I gave it five stars it is so strange um, it's very very strange <laughs> that's all I can say I am actually going to be reading it again I'm hoping to read it in October actually so if you want to read along with me if you're someone that hasn't read it yet um let me know um I will be reading it like all in one this time um not the way that I done it previously just to kind of get a different experience and of course because I know what happens um I feel um confident that I can read it you know basically there's like there's there's the main look this this page shows it very well so up here is our our main story right that's going through and then all of um the footnotes are from Johnny and then there's obviously there's sometimes there's other people then as well there's like the editor it's very complicated okay there's a lot of footnotes, a lot of reading, a lot of things that you have to do, but I absolutely loved it and I can't wait to give it another read and I highly recommend it. If you're someone who finds like obviously things difficult, um, I know that some people with like um, dyslexia and stuff find it very hard and obviously no wonder, but I do feel like if it is too hard to grasp, maybe just read the main story and read nothing else, like um, basically just forget about everything else and do it that way and see how you get on um there is different ways people read it and you can find a lot about it online but maybe just be careful I'm weary of spoilers but yeah one of my favorites definitely of all time so the lighting has gotten a bit bad and I've turned on a light you can see it actually there but it didn't really help that much but it does look kind of nice and cozy anyway the next book I read was the sleeper and the spindle which was by Neil Gaiman and this is like a comic 
little small little graphic novel actually it's a big book but it's it's like not a lot of pages that I reckon this was absolutely stunning it was kind of like a retelling thing of um sleeping beauty um snow white kind of thing i absolutely love it i really want to buy this the edition that i had was from the library and it was in bits but it looks absolutely stunning the artwork i just oh my god i couldn't get over it i gave it five stars i really loved it and um like i said i really want to buy it and i do recommend it for anyone who enjoys and likes um comics or graphic novels the next um thing I read was actually a graphic novel called Fun Home, uh, a family tragic comic by Al Alison Elizabeth, I was going to say, Al uh, I was going to say Elizabeth again, Alison um, Bechdel, Bechdel, I can't, I'm not too sure how you say that, but um, Fun Home is one of these graphic novels that when you like Google best gra graphic novels of all time or s just like various things like that about graphic novels, this will always come home. Come home. This will always come up. Fun home. Um, this is what I thought about a woman basically telling her story of growing up in a funeral home. Actually, what I found out is it's about um, the woman in this her father oh my god why did it take me so long to say that i really didn't like this and i was so disappointed um i genuinely thought i was gonna love this everyone talks about it there has been times in the past where i would have bought it and i just didn't for whatever reason because i was sure it was a story about a girl growing up in a funeral home and that we were going to be talking about that and maybe about death and stuff like that and while that is spoken about it's more to do with her father and the kind of person her father was and stuff like this and that in itself isn't the bad thing the thing that I didn't like about this and the thing that let it down an awful lot is the constant quotes. So um, she was literally, like literally every page you would turn, there would be a quote from another author and she would be the same that that was her life. Like, oh, like this happened in my life. And then she'd have the quote from the author explaining how she felt. It got to the point where I was like halfway through and I was like, hang on a minute, how is this not plagiarism? Because this is really bad. Like she is literally taking quotes from other authors like James Joyce and these other ones constantly. It was just cutting every single page. And um, I got this really strong feeling of pretentiousness that I've never really gotten from things before and I hate saying that because I know an awful lot of people like this book and I mean obviously I I'm I don't mean to be mean or anything like that but I am so surprised at this and it really let me down quite a lot and her father was a horrible thing but not only that everybody in her family including herself were not good humans um for a certain reason that I can't really like get into because it will spoil obviously if anyone for wanting to read it but it was really bizarre um that things went the way they did anyway um somebody I was also saying because I was reading reviews somebody was also saying about how cold it is and everything like that and I totally agree now they said that other people have said oh it's supposed to feel cold it's supposed to feel like that because that's how her father was and it's like yeah I get that but this was the wrong kind of cold it just wasn't done very well another thing I noticed was it was hurting my eyes and my brain at some points when I was reading it I felt like I was jumping ahead by accident and things like this I thought it was just me I thought oh maybe I'm not like maybe I'm not feeling well or something like that but it turns out other people had this problem as well there was some reviews from somebody specifically who was saying the layout of this graphic novel is not very well now art can be interpreted any way it wants you can lay out your graphic novel any way you want like that's that's just at the end of the day that is the reality and when it comes to art and stuff like this but it just so happens whatever way she decided to do this is not good it doesn't flow very well it hurts your brain and there has been other books look i read house of leaves it's all over the place but still you're able to follow it a certain way 
but with this graphic novel your eyes were always made go somewhere else and not to where your eyes should have in the conversation and you were missing bits and it was just yeah I, I can't explain it any other than that and I'll be going on forever if I continue but this was a really big letdown I gave it two stars the art was really good after that the layout was really bad but the art was nice after that I honestly don't know um I feel like it's just it's just not a one star but it's very close to it so I uh, you know it is very close for me um but just that constant constant quote from other authors how did she get away with it I'm very surprised I don't know how how anyone could get away with that the next graphic novel I read was um Summer Spirit by Elizabeth Hollyville I think Holly Hollville maybe um this I only picked up because I loved the artwork and um this is a story about a family um um our main kind of character is she's young her cousins and her sister are older now they're getting into to kind of their teenage years and they go to visit their grandmother um kind of beside the sea or whatever and um it's basically about kind of growing up and stuff like that but this was a very messy story um there were several stories going on at one and none of them all had a very good conclusion there is a supernatural element to this as well i absolutely love the art style this is really stunning and beautiful like that's why i picked it up i saw it in the library and i was like I need to pick that up and read it. It looked stunning, but um, it was a it was a fair letdown. I gave it two stars because I didn't enjoy it that much. Um, it definitely needed a bit more structure and actual endings because it did feel like really crappy endings. Like the like the author had no idea where to go with it. You know, it was very odd. But um, that was nice. If it sounds like you might like it, maybe go for it, but I wouldn't recommend. So the next graphic novel though was called Daybreak and this was by Brian Ralph. So I picked this up because I really loved the art style that was on the front of it. It reminded me a lot of Scott Pilgrim and some other comics and stuff that I really enjoy this type of artwork. Um, when I got it and I was just about to read it, I just quickly just went to see what the rating was on Goodreads. So many people hate this. They've given and two stars and they've been like this is terrible I was like oh flip I have to read another bad graphic novel <laughs> I'm picking them real bad lately but it turns out this is one of my favorite graphic novels of all time I am absolutely so confused why so many people hate this it is really really good um it is a zombie apocalypse story that's all I'll say we have um like characters in it the, basically the way that this is done, the POV, the way the panels are, are in this um, are all absolutely amazing and I love them so much and I highly, highly recommend this to anybody who wants to get into graphic novels but is looking for something maybe not as light as Heartstopper, maybe something a bit more gritty. It is a bit bloody and stuff like that because obviously zombies but I absolutely I just loved this I loved the ending I loved everything about it I absolutely will have to buy this because I got it in the library I highly recommend it and I do not understand why people are giving it such bad reviews the only thing I can think of is there is a Netflix show and I'm wondering did they read it after they watched the Netflix show and maybe the Netflix show is not very good or something like that I have no idea I haven't watched it or anything like that I will now but there is a specific um, style to the graphic novel that I absolutely love and I'm wondering is that in the TV show because it would make a very interesting TV show if done right but I, but I can't be sure I don't know but yeah um, I love this I highly recommend it so the last book that I read in May um, was Tender is the Flesh this is by Augustina Baz Terica. <laughs> Sorry, I can't really say her name. But Tender is the Flesh is basically a dystopian novel about um it's set in the future at some point. We're not really given an exact date or anything like that, but it's set in the future where people um have now turned to eating human meat because there has a virus gone loose on animals and we can't eat them anymore. So that's basically the premise, the idea of this. So when I first got it and I started hearing about it people were like this is so messed up you have to like read this it's so good it's so brilliant it's so disturbing and I in my mind thought it was going to be more 
really kind of more gritty dystopian almost post-apocalyptic kind of thing and it's not like that at all it's basically like a world we live in now only that we eat human meat but I also thought that the human meat that we were going to be eating was like our neighbors or murderers or somebody down the road do you know what I mean that's not it um I'm going to tell you this what because it's like it's in the synopsis and stuff I just didn't read it but they breed the humans so um they breed them kind of like I suppose we do with cattle and stuff um they breed them and slaughter them and eat them so it's not like um it's not like you're gonna get eaten does that make sense so that changed things for me a lot um I didn't like this book I know so many people love it so do try and look at other reviews maybe of people that did really like it because if you do enjoy the synopsis I don't usually like people or I don't usually like myself reading the synopsis of things but I would recommend you read the synopsis and see if it will be something that you would enjoy because you might I really didn't enjoy this. I didn't like it at all. I thought it was really badly done. I thought the characters were written terribly. I thought the whole um, dystopian world that they were in was really badly explained. I feel like we wouldn't be that quick to go and start eating people. I'm sorry, but I mean, I know as messed up as we are, one of the things that I found very hard with this book was to believe it. Um, this has never happened to me before. I would like you to let me know, has this ever happened to you before where you've read a book and you just didn't believe it? Because I always assumed that when you pick up a book and you would read it, like, you'd automatically believe it. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, I've read Harry Potter. Like, I believe in Hogwarts. Like, I believe in Lord of the Rings. Well, I haven't read Lord of the Rings, but I just mean that place. Well, I read The Hobbit. So, like, I, I believe The Hobbit. Like, like, there's some kind of a belief that you have to put into these... when you're When you're reading it... But whatever it was about this book, I just didn't believe it. And because of that, it was just, it fell completely flat for me. And um, it was almost laughable at times because of that. Like, because she didn't build the world up enough for me to believe it. And, or how it would have happened. Like, we get kind of, kind of little glimpses of how it would happen, but not really anything um structural i i suppose you could say it's very character driven right so we'll talk about that for a minute if if it's character driven fair enough but the character is awful like the, our main character our main character is a man and this is written by a woman and i would have been 100% sure this was written about written by a man about a man had i not known the author he basically, any, right, the women in this are treated like complete shite as well. So if he's not having basically a relationship with the women who are mentioned in this book, then he has some kind of um, motherly relationship to them or they're related to him basically. So that will give you an idea of the way women are written in this. It's really fucking bad. I don't want, know why more people don't actually comment on the, on this. I suppose in some situations you can put that aside. Obviously, like, you know, no book's going to be absolutely perfect, but this was very jarringly so. Um, then there's one, <laughs> the thing, the one big massive thing, uh, everyone was so shocked about the end and they were so like shocked and everything like that. And I was like, what did you think was going to happen? I'm sorry, but I predicted that ending like straight away. Like from the first freaking bit. Like I wasn't even halfway and I knew what was going to happen in the end. So I'm very confused. So I did read some reviews. There is some other people who also predicted it too. So I'm not the only one. I'm very glad that I'm not the only one. But it was very clear what was going to happen in this book. Um... Which again is annoying too. I don't like kind of knowing what's going to happen. But then I thought, oh, it's very obvious. You know, maybe it won't. And then, of course, it did. Um, he's a man, basically, is all you need to know. You know, you know, you freaking know what's going to happen. And um, yeah, nothing was overly shocking. Like there was a very detailed description of people being slaughtered. But all I could think was, yeah, like, okay. What? <laughs> That's how things are killed. Like when you when you have to kill something from me, 
that's how it's killed. Like, I, I don't understand what's supposed to be so super shocking about it. It just didn't shock me when, I suppose, when you already know these things, it's not super... Yeah, I don't know. I suppose I was very detached to it from the very beginning because I just did not believe it and it needed to be built up a lot more. And it was just not my thing. Merle agrees. That's it. I'm done. I'm gonna finish. Oh, Merle, you look so cute. I'm gonna finish now. Um, that was everything I read in May. I highly, highly recommend um, House of Leaves and Daybreak. They were, I yeah, they were definitely my favorites. And um, let me know what you read in May if you even remember, because <laughs> it was a while ago. Um, or even just what you're reading now. I'm gonna shout out my Patreon, so thank you so much to Lolly, Abstinzia, <laughs> um, Michelle, Cheryl, and Linda. Thank you so much. I I can't thank you enough. Merle thanks you. Merle, you thank? You thank them? Yeah, no, he's too interested in what Steve's doing. <laughs> he's gone now but yeah thank you so much um and if you are interested in signing up to my patreon it is linked below i also have a wish list i've done like an amazon wish list and i have like books and stuff in it and then i have a kindle wish list so if you um just want to support me and you want to like send me some they're down below and um yeah thank you so much for your support as always and i will see you in my next video bye